even of views that are objectionable, offensive, hateful. It's when that speech crosses into conduct that violates our policies against bullying, harassment, Does that speech and not cross that barrier? Does that speech not call for the genocide of Jews and the elimination of Israel? When you testify that you understand that is the def definition of intifada. Is that speech, speech according to the code of conduct or not? We embrace a commitment to free expression and give a wide berth to free expression, even of views that are objectionable. I will ask you one more time. Does calling for the genocide of Jews violate Harvard's rules of bullying and harassment? Yes or no? Anti-Semitic rhetoric. When it and is it anti-Semitic rhetoric? Anti-Semitic rhetoric when it crosses into conduct that amounts to bullying, harassment, intimidation, that is actionable conduct and we do take action. I, I have a friend whose son goes to the University of Pennsylvania. Right now he is physically afraid to go to the library at night. Okay, just unbelievable. Um, could you, I, I mean, I, I just can't even conceive that's going on in the United States of America. But that's what she tells me, she doesn't make it up. Could you give us your reasons as to why that is true at Pennsylvania, why today a Jewish student is afraid to walk to the library at night? Congressman, let me start by saying I'm, I'm devastated to hear that and uh, the safety and security of our campus and our students in particular is my top concern. Um, I would, if you would be willing, I would like to talk to your constituent and their their Penn student. I'm very troubled by what you're reporting. It's our top priority to keep our students safe and secure. ...where I shared with my colleagues. I have heard from faculty, students, staff, and alumni of incidents of intimidation and harassment. I have seen reckless and thoughtless rhetoric shared in person and online, on campus and off. I have listened to leaders in our Jewish community who are scared and disillusioned. At the same time, I know members of Harvard's Muslim and Arab communities are also hurting. During these past months, the world, our nation, and our campuses have also seen a rise of incidents of Islamophobia. During these difficult days, I have felt the bonds of our community strain. In response, I have sought to confront hate while preserving free expression. This is difficult work, and I know that I have not always gotten it right. Our next witness is Dr. Pamela Nadell, who is a... When speech crosses over into conduct that violates our policies, um, policies against bullying, harassment, intimidation, we do take action. Um, and we do have faculty-led student disciplinary processes that are quite robust. Um, and even over the last couple of months, as there have been incidents, um, we have, we've been leaning into those processes and we do have um, disciplinary actions underway. Thank you for the moment of silence for the 137 hostages who are still being held. We, we said 2% of your faculty view Donald Trump as something other poor in 2016 and after four years of working for diversity, 1% voted for him. Now, I know all sorts of good people who don't like President Trump, but I'm just saying, when you compare the way people think at your campus compared to America as a whole, if there's one thing you are, it's not diverse, right? Well, I, I, do, you, do you consider that a problem or the, the numbers I gave you? So, um, Congressman, I can't speak to the specific data that you are referring to. What I can say is that at Harvard, we try to create as much space as possible for a wide range of views and perspectives because we believe that allows for oh. a thriving academic community. Coming today and to testify before the committee, but uh, we embrace a commitment to free expression, even of views that are objectionable, offensive, hateful. It's when that speech crosses into conduct that violates our policies against bullying, harassment, Does that speech and not cross that barrier? Does that speech not call for the genocide of Jews and the elimination of Israel? 
when you that's You testify being, that you understand that is the def definition of intifada. Is that speech, speech according to the code of conduct or not? We embrace a commitment to free expression and give a wide berth to free expression, even of views that are objectionable. Free Chairwoman Fox, the state of Israel has the right to exist. Uh, President Gay and President McGill, do, you, do either of you plan to suspend foreign students who violate the law or school policies? Thank you for your question. Our international students are a vibrant part of our community and contribute significantly to Harvard's strength and are a real source of pride. But all of our students, irrespective of their citizenship, are held accountable to following our policies, um, including our policies around bullying, harassment, and intimidation. And we hold them accountable for that. I so wish that this hearing, um, I agree with you that anyone who uh, was arrested for an activity that was anti-Semitic, uh, some act or uh, something else, harassment, intimidation, uh, should certainly receive education in addition to other consequences in my sure, opinion. Sure, some criminal activity they were arrested for that was obviously driven by anti-Semitic beliefs and expressions. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair, and thank you to the witness. We immediately investigate any hateful act, cooperating with both law enforcement and the FBI, where we have identified individuals who have committed these acts in violation of either policy or law. We initiate disciplinary proceedings and engage law enforcement. I need to address the question. Uh, I, I have a friend whose son goes to the University of Pennsylvania. Right now, he is physically afraid to go to the library at night. Okay, just unbelievable. Um, could you, I mean, I just can't even conceive that's going on in the United States of America, but that's what she tells me, she doesn't make it up. Could you give us your reasons as to why that is true at Pennsylvania, why today a Jewish student is afraid to walk to the library at night? Congressman, let me start by saying I'm, I'm devastated to hear that, and uh, the safety and security of our campus and our students in particular is my top concern. Um, I would. If you would be willing, I would like to talk to your constituent and their, their Penn student. I'm very troubled by what you're reporting. It's our top priority to keep our students safe and secure. We are devoted to solving the problems that face society. The chanting, um, I think, uh, calling for intifada global revolution, very, very disturbing. Um, and I can imagine many people's reaction to that would be one of fear. Um, so I, I believe at a, a minimum that is, that is hateful speech um, that has been and, and should be condemned. Um, whether it rises to the level of incitement to violence under the policies that Penn and the city of Philadelphia follow, which are guided by the United States Constitution, um, I think is a, a much more difficult question. The incitement to violence is, is a very narrow category. Uh, the Anti-Defamation League found that reports of anti-Semitism... So if education's the mission and education's the solution, how did UPenn arrive at this horrible place that actually I'm ashamed to be an alumni of your university? I'm very sorry to hear that, Congressman. Uh, I'm we, not alone. We have... Uh, we have work to do, I agree. Well, I keep hearing that. I think you have a need for leadership or a need of federal intervention to cut off the resources that allow this continued failed, this mission that's failed to continue. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Does calling for the genocide of Jews violate Penn's code of conduct when it comes to bullying and harassment? Yes or no? It can be harassment. The answer is yes. And Dr. Gay, at Harvard, does calling for the genocide of Jews violate Harvard's rules of bullying and harassment, yes or no? It can be, depending on the context. What's the context? Targeted as an individual, targeted as, at an individual. It's Do targeted at Jewish that? students, Jewish individuals. Do you understand your testimony is dehumanizing them? Do you understand that dehumanization is part of antisemitism? I will ask you one more time. Does calling for the genocide of Jews violate Harvard's rules of bullying and harassment, yes or no? 
anti-Semitic rhetoric when it and crosses is it anti-Semitic rhetoric? Anti-Semitic rhetoric when it crosses into conduct that amounts to bullying, harassment, intimidation. That is actionable conduct, and we do take action. So the answer is yes. That calling for the genocide of Jews violates Harvard Code of Conduct. Correct. Again. It depends on the context. It does not depend on the context. The answer is yes, and this is why you should resign. These are unacceptable answers across the board. Professor of History and Jewish Studies at American University. There have been lunches, there have been meetings for our Israeli and Jewish students with Jewish faculty, for our Arab and Muslim students with Arab and Muslim faculty, but now they're working to figure out how to bring them together. If we're all going to live and work together productively, we have to move beyond you know, formal training, which we are committed to, but to actual real dialogue and to actually model constructive and civil dialogue for our students. That's what being in university is all about. I want to thank each of you for being here today. Speech can become a form of harassment, and our policies make absolutely clear that harassment is punishable. Speech that targets individuals, or again, as we've heard, incites violence on our campus, or crosses the line, these cross the line into harassment. This is taken very, very seriously. Right.